Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of the Family Math Night Kits, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, Rose Window. I'm super excited about this one. It turned out absolutely fabulous. So I got the inspiration for this after visiting the Chartres Cathedral in France, um, and then I based the design of this project on the North Transept Rose Window at the Chartres Cathedral. So rose windows are found mostly in French cathedrals um, that were built during the medieval period. Um, cathedrals were built in the shape of a cross. And this big section here is called the nave. And the arms of the cross are called the transepts. And then the altar was built over here on the east side. So the north transept rose window then at the cathedral would be found right there. They um, believe that the name rose window came from um, the radiating spokes of rose windows and the resemblance to the rotating petals of a rose. Um, I love the symmetry of rose windows. Um, specifically the rotational or radial symmetry. So if you take um, a shape like this and you look at the geometric shapes on here and you rotate it around a central point, so we would this would be our central point. So you rotate it around a central point less than 360 degrees and then it lands directly on itself, okay? Um, that's rotational or radial symmetry. And I just love that in, um, in the rose windows. Um, most rose windows have a theme or a story, and a lot of those stories are based on the Bible. The north transept rose window at Sharth, the um, central circle, or what's called the oculus, was the depiction of the Virgin, uh, the glorification of the Virgin. Um, then it had 12 disciples, um, 12 fleur de lis, 12 minor prophets. Um, the theme that I'm using for our project is um, geometry and fractions, and we'll get into that when I talk about the lesson plan. So what I want to do next is describe um, the materials and the setup um, of your station. The um, lesson plan for this, all the activity sheets I'm going to show you, all the table tents and so forth can be found um, in the lesson plan on our website, familymountlight.com, under the projects tab. So um, one of the first things that you're going to need to do, obviously, is make your um, the black uh, circle. And it's a 40-inch diameter circle. And in that lesson plan, um, I have a link to a short video where I show you how to make use a simple tool to create the perfect circle. Um, so it will be really easy for you to create that. I used poster board to create mine, but you can also use um, bulletin board paper um, as well. So once you've got your black circle created, um, to make it easy for the station facilitators to place the different um, panes on the window, um, I decided to, to create a template that you can use to create little tick marks on your black circle that will help them, guide them to where all of the different paints should go. And in the lesson plan, it's called the, I called it the placement template. Now this is gonna be a little bit hard for you to see because it's, it's faded, uh, but there's a rose window on here. And then there are these, all these little tick marks. And what I did is I made a transparency of this. So I only have access to a, an overhead projector, um, but I made a transparency. Okay, this is my transparency. Um, you can also use the document camera. But then I shone this up on my uh, black circle and I matched it. And then I used chalk and I, and I uh, made all those little tick marks that I was just talking about. So when I was done, it looked something like this. Okay, um, I made my tick marks darker so that you could see it here on the video, but you can make it a little bit lighter than that. And then as the station facilitators are putting up the different panes, you can just wipe those off so that they, would, they can disappear. Okay, um, and then you can see here, let me put this on here, how easy it is then to know where these pieces go um, on your rose window. Now, this project 
um, is designed to serve 49 participants. If you're going to have more than 49 participants, you could obviously make two windows and then you'd be serving almost 100 participants. Another thing that you can do is to create um, additional windows. So rows windows are often flanked by smaller windows, kind of like that. So you can create some additional windows like this. And then you can see we just started this, but you can place all the additional um, window panes on this and then everybody gets represented um, in this. If you're going to do that, then obviously you're gonna to need to make some extra copies of the activity sheets. Okay, so um, when I set up my station, if you're familiar with my other collaborative projects, you know I like to use a long cafeteria table. And when I set it up, I put out my table tents, my beginning, intermediate, and advanced table tents. So loosely, the beginning level is K1, then we have 2, 3, and 4, 5. Um, and then I spread out my... Um, uh, 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 collab my um, table tents for the project and we'll get back to that in just a second and the glue sticks are all spread out and my scissors are all spread out and then of course um, the squares that you're going to need for them to make their stained glass paints now I cut these out of poster board they're just easier to use that way I used a large uh, paper cutter um, to make these squares um, some schools have access to a die cut that cuts out perfect squares, um, and that is ideal if you have um, that available to you. Okay, so now um, I want to get into the actual um, activities, the lesson plan. I'm going to go back to that table tent. So this is basically the guide that participants are going to use um, to know exactly what to do at this station. I'm just going to read what this says here. So it says, you will be using geometric shapes to design a stained glass pane that will be used to create a large rose window. And then I describe what rose window is. One, choose an activity sheet, beginning, intermediate, advanced, or all levels. Two, design your stained glass pane according to the directions on the activity sheet. And then it has some questions down here. We're gonna get back to those in just a second. Okay, so let's get to those activity sheets. The beginning level activity sheet looks like this. Now, when I run off copies of this, I run it off on thicker paper because it's just easier to work with. So here's the beginning one. And it says here, one, use the colored squares to create your stained glass pane. You may cut the squares into triangles, rectangles, and smaller squares if you like. So they can. They can take these inch squares and they can cut them. And there's a lot of learning that happens when they're doing this because I just cut that in half and I ended up with two triangles. Okay, so they can cut triangles or squares or rectangles. Um, and then number two says glue your geometric shapes in the semicircle below. Try not to overlap your shapes. Three, cut out your stained glass pane and hand it to the station facilitator who will add it to our collaborative rose window. And four, optional, answer the questions on the table tent. Okay, so um, that's, these are the questions that I talked about earlier. If they, it's an option if they want to um, participate in the com mathematical conversation with their kids. I'm um, at the beginning level, here are the questions. Can you name the shapes in your design? How many red squares did you use in your design? And then it says fill in with other colors and shapes. So how many red squares did you use? How many red triangles? How many blue triangles? How many whatever other shapes they use? So now they're talking about the attributes of shapes and that's great um, for these little guys to be talking about that. Okay, so that's um, the beginning level. Now, in the directions where it says, try not to overlap your shapes, the reason for that is because we want students to be able to recognize those shapes clearly. And if they overlap them, then um, that kind of makes it a little bit difficult to do that. Okay, so at the intermediate level, okay, their activity sheet looks like this. And notice the grid here. So it's a square and it's filled with smaller squares. Participants can 
um, count one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 16. They can use repeated addition for a 12, 16, or they can use multiplication. Four times four is 16. To find out that 16 of the small squares fit inside that large square. And they're gonna be using the colors yellow, red, and blue. And they need to design their stained glass pane so that half of it is yellow, one fourth is red, and one fourth is blue. And using the, the um, squares okay, and putting them on here um, is very hands-on and um, will help them figure out that eight, they're gonna need eight yellow squares Okay, four for one fourth, they're gonna need four red and then four blue. And they too get to cut these and add them um, to their designs. And you can see here how some of the participants created um, their shapes. But all of these are half yellow, one fourth blue and one fourth red. Now, um, in case you choose different colors, um, then I have, uh, there's an activity sheet there that's blank here and you can fill in your own colors. So the questions for these guys on the table tent are how many halves equal one whole? So again, clearly you can see that if this is half yellow, then that one half, two halves, there are two halves that equal one whole. How many fourths equal one whole? And again, you can see this is one, two, three, so four fourths equal one whole. And then there's a challenge question that says, name a fraction equivalent to one half. Okay, so if these here, this, these eight, okay, represent one half of this, then they could say eight sixteenths, okay? They could say two fourths, okay? But it's very visual there for them. Okay, so at the advanced level, their activity sheet looks like this. It's sort of a cross, okay? And they have 12 squares that they're working with. And one sixth needs to be yellow, one third is green, one fourth is red, one sixth is blue, and one twelfth is pink. And so they need to manipulate their squares to figure out that, um, okay, well, if one six is yellow, then that means I have to put, I need two yellow squares. And again, they get to cut theirs um, into the different shapes. Um, but again, one six will, always, will be yellow in all of them and so forth, okay? And if you wanna choose different colors, there's one here for you to fill in your own colors. And the questions for these guys on the table tent is, order the fractions on the activity sheet from least to greatest. So the least on here is 1 12th, and then they would order them um, to the highest fraction. And then name a fraction that is equivalent to 1 4th. So if they figure out that one, what 1 4th is on here, okay, it's three different squares, so they could say that 3 twelfths is equivalent to 1 4th. And then it says, how about 1 3rd, so an equivalent fraction for 1 3rd? Well, 1 3rd of this would be 4 of the squares, so you could say 4 twelfths is equivalent to um, 1 <coughs> one third. And then there's an all levels um, activity sheet. And I just spread these out on the table for those who are interested in doing this. But basically, it's very similar to the beginning one where they just fill this in with their own um, design. And then finally, there's the center circle or the oculus um, to be completed as well. So super fun activity with a really an amazing result. It was, uh, it was super fun to do. I hope you enjoy it.